in foundation to scene one, take two. And action. Hi again, it is Julia from the Daisy Foundation. Um, I am here this week with Jill from Sun In. Hi there. Um, she has had this kind of thrown on her. She had no idea she was going to be doing this with me today. So we're <laughs> going to see how it goes. Um, what I wanted to come and talk to you guys about today was the number one thing you can do to prepare for birth. Um, and that is to figure out if there's something you are afraid of, figure out what that is and try and get over it. So fear is pretty much comes up all the time in all the courses that I teach somebody has some fear of some some aspect of labor um, and the problem with fear is that we need two um, particular hormones during labor we need oxytocin which is kind of the happy hormone and it's the one that gets our contractions going and makes them nice and strong and powerful and effective and we need endorphins which are our own natural pain relief so when we have oxytocin and endorphins, they work together wonderfully and they give us powerful contractions that are manageable. When we are fearful of something, we're stressed and we have stress hormones in our body. So that's adrenaline and cortisol. And we don't want them because if we have adrenaline and cortisol in our body, we can't also produce the oxytocin and the endorphins that we need. So that's when labor kind of comes into trouble. So one of the main reasons we have fear, in my experience of, of speaking to lots of women, is the unknown. We don't really know that much um, about, it might be labour as a whole or it might be one aspect of labour. Um, in school, in sex ed, we don't really learn about that aspect of what it is to be a woman. We don't learn about the cervix, the uterus. I don't know, did you learn about those in school, Jill? A while ago, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's all a massive unknown to us, um, to most of us, when we go into labour. So we're going to do a fun little demonstration today um, that basically just shows what it is that happens to the cervix, how the cervix dilates, um, and that it's a really nice, gentle process. Um, so to do our little demonstration, we each have a balloon, which is our womb for the day, <laughs> and a ping pong ball, which is our baby. Um, you can choose if your baby's going to be a girl or a boy. What would you like? Um, I think I'd like a wee girl. A wee girl. Yeah. Right. You can even think about a name if you want. <laughs> so for now, pop your ping pong ball down, yeah. and we're going to have to open up the balloon and get the ball in. So you need to, if you just pull the neck open, it won't go in. You need to really get your fingers right the way down to the bottom of the balloon and then stuff the balloon all the way inside. Yeah, there we go. If you're doing this at home, which is quite good fun to do, I do recommend it. You have to get your fingers right the way to the bottom, otherwise the ball gets stuck. And uh, stuck is not a word we like to use when we're talking about labor, so. Um, so we have our baby in our womb. Now we need to inflate our womb a little bit. So give it a blow, just, just a little bit, not too much. Okay. Yep, that's about right. Yeah. So let the ball settle in the bottom. Pull on the bottom a little bit. Let the ball settle where it is. You might need to hold it in place with your other fingers once it gets there. And then once it settles, you can let go. Hold it at the top. There we go. She's done it. <laughs> so um, it's quite funny actually because this is about the size and shape of a cervix before it starts to dilate. It's about that sort of width and it's about two and a half centimeters long. So when we have Braxton Hicks contractions, they're just from the side and they don't really do anything. That baby doesn't really go anywhere and it doesn't change the appearance of the cervix. But when we have true contractions, they are from the top. So we're gonna get our hands on top and we're gonna do some gentle squeezes. And as we squeeze, you'll notice that, first of all, the cervix has started to thin. Um, and so the cervix does two things, it thins, and it dilates, it opens up. So as we keep going, gently, just little gentle pushes, nudging baby down until we get right the way to the bottom. And when we get to the bottom, if you have a wee look, you'll notice that baby's right there, really close to coming out. Are you excited? Very. <laughs> <laughs> so if we give it a few more gentle little pushes, you might manage to stop it just as it's about to come out. If I can manage that. I just gave up. Hold on, here we go. Mine is really nicely dilated now. Look at that, we're so 
close. I'm gonna try not to smash the camera screen when I do this. A couple more gentle pushes and... Oh. <laughs> Perfectly <Thanks>. timed. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, you too. <laughs> So just a nice little way of showing how it's a really slow, gentle process. It is designed to take a long time because it is gentle. Um, if you've got a boring Zoom meeting coming up, why not give it a bash? Tell everybody to bring a, a ping pong ball and a balloon or, along. Also, if you've got older children, it's a really nice, fun way to demonstrate to them what's going to be happening. So I hope that's useful. Take a video if you're doing it, do send it to me. Um, and you can find me on social media. I'm at Daisy Foundation Julia on Instagram and Facebook. All right, thanks for joining me, Jill. Thank you for having me. And thank you. Bye. Bye.